Squamish here is a perfect example of a community rising to the challenge of providing more housing in BC, despite their tough geographical location. Garibaldi Mountains on one side, Howe Sound on the other, developers here are limited by where and how they can accommodate the massive influx of people moving here over the past few years. So I want to know who is actually positioned to meet this growing demand. And how are they addressing the need to preserve Squamish's natural beauty and rich cultural heritage? Well, just over my shoulder here at the site of the former Squamish sawmill, we have Boza Properties Sea and Sky Development, a master plan community trying to solve the growing housing shortages in Squamish. A family owned business, Boza Properties claim to be committed to craftsmanship, doing the right thing, and dedicated to establishing lifelong customers. Known in recent years for their stunning architecture, like Cardero, which broke the then current BC record, selling at $1,750 per square foot when it was released, or the proposed 1700 Alberni with its unique design. I want to know what Boza is doing here in Squamish, and why should people like you and me actually care? In recent years, Squamish's population has ballooned by over 25%, way above the provincial average. And this master plan community is hoping to house the vast majority of those people moving to the area. Spanning over 53 acres, Sea and Sky aims to accommodate over 1,400 new homes for the growing population. Now, at the time of this recording, we're in phase two of nine with every phase up until now nearly sold out. See all those little red dots? That means they're already nabbed. The south half of this development is primarily condos, with the north half, Parkside Homes, where we will be looking at today, all townhouses. Okay, so first off, master plan community. What's the pros and cons? Well, the number one thing that you gain from buying into a master plan is comprehensive planning. A design that considers all aspects of community living, from residential zones, daycares, commercial spaces, and recreational facilities. Between the proposed crossing, which will house the state-of-the-art swimming pool, gymnasium, and community spaces, and the pedestrian bridge currently being built connecting this development directly to downtown Squamish, Boza Properties and Kingswood Properties are doing their best to make sure that this is not going to be a dreary neighborhood to get bored in. You can also rest assured that Squamish is family friendly. Access to nature and the many parks aside, the town itself boasts multiple elementary and secondary school, offering education through English, French immersion, and alternative learning programs. Not to mention the recent introduction of Capilano University, for those who want to stay put for third level education. You can always tell an awful lot about a development by how it's marketed, and Sea and Sky is no different. Their website is full of testimonials from diverse couples and adventure seekers who are already living in the community and might one day be your neighbor, including Ryan, backpack designer for Arcteryx. So who knows? Maybe if you buy into this neighborhood, you might get a few free backpacks to boot. A big selling point of this development is its commitment to nature. And there are hundreds of pages from Boza Properties and Kingswood Properties, the construction partner, about how they're trying to achieve this. Obviously, the view is a big selling point here. Living below the chief in itself is pretty impressive. And the developers have gone to great lengths to ensure that these homes blend seamlessly into their surroundings. The site is regraded and sloped at different points to ensure that no building is too high to seem out of place. The streets here are also designed in order to maximize the views to the bluff with minimal retaining walls to keep that connection to the water. And while all that may be beautiful to look at, my big question for any development that is built near water is what measures are you taking to make sure that homeowners will be protected over the next three, five, 15 years with the rising sea levels? Now we posed this question to Sea and Sky team and they told us that in anticipation of this, 
they actually have a built-in buffer zone, putting these homes well above the flood construction level with a 15 meter setback, allowing for a pretty unique feature that you don't see in very many other homes here in Squamish, as this buffer allows developers to build livable space on the ground floor. The development promises to provide an abundance of amenities for people who are making the move here, like the new community center, and the aforementioned highly anticipated pedestrian bridge, allowing you to get from your home to downtown Squamish significantly quicker and all without needing to take your car out of its garage. So the plan seems solid. The community looks amazing. What about the houses themselves? This house is a four bed, three and a half bath over three levels in the Parkside phase. There are three models to choose from, a 1A, a B and B, ranging from just under 1,500 square feet to nearly 1,800 square feet. Now, all of the properties in the Parkside section offer garages on the ground floor with living area on the main floor and bedrooms on the top. So I think it's about time we checked it out. Now, Parkside Homes claim to offer exclusive high-end finishes and appliances like this Premier Bosch and Miele kitchen appliance packages. And one of the most important things in the new builds these days, something you don't see very often in downtown Vancouver, air conditioning. You also get your choice of light or dark finishes and some pretty good laminated floorboards with all the nice shiny gloss and whatnot. And while all of that is great, what we really want to know about are the bones of the house, along with all the financials. Well, firstly, unlike all builds in Ireland, it is a wood frame house. This is great because of the miniature air pockets that are present in wood, making these homes poor conductors of heat, meaning less heat escapes outside in the winter, minimizing the strain on indoor heating systems, while also keeping the homes cooler in the summer. An absolute must for these rising temperatures. In terms of financing and incentives though, what do you need to know? At the time of recording this video, prices are starting in the upper 1.2 millions. And if you grab one of these places at the right time, the developer is offering some pretty nice incentives, like a mortgage buy down, allowing you, the home buyer, to temporarily reduce the interest rate on your home loan for the first few years. To snag one of these homes, you'll need a deposit of 10%. It's also good to know that they don't allow assignment in the Parkside properties, although this may change with additional phases. And if you don't know what assignment is, then do not worry. It probably doesn't apply to you. The developer is also offering a special home warranty of one year and then two years on labor and materials, five years on the building envelope and 10 years on the physical structure itself. Now the one year is significant because it's direct through the developer, not the manufacturer. And it's as simple as scanning a QR code inside your home. So who's buying these places? Well, it seems pretty obvious the developer is targeting these homes to families and younger couples, and even the downsizers from Squamish. But in reality, the demographic is much more varied. As for investment opportunities, bylaws to regulate short-term rentals in Squamish are in effect, so you won't be buying here to use it as an Airbnb cash cow. Longer-term rentals though? Absolutely, the more the merrier. Which, in my opinion, makes it great for the community. So, sea and sky. Look, it's no secret that I love Squamish, so I'm aware I could be vulnerable to some confirmation bias here, even in the rain. But I really like what I've seen today, or Boza had an easy job to impress me. Either way, you hear a lot of stories about developers coming into communities and bulldozing their way through for profits. But that really doesn't seem to be the case here. Squamish is growing and properties are being snapped up like hotcakes. The Sea and Sky is a turnkey property close to downtown and with easy access to the Sea to Sky Highway. Prices are pretty affordable, or at least they're standard for the same quality around Squamish. And these properties allow space for your family to grow or even your home business to expand. On the downside, the place isn't built yet. So you're buying into the master plan community before it's fully realized or everyone has even moved in. And while I don't see it taking too long for this place to fill up, you may be without a neighbor for a while. Although, depending on you ask, that might actually be another bonus. But hey, these are just my two cents. Let me know your thoughts on the whole thing down below. And who knows, maybe my fondness for Squamish has gotten in the way of some honest reporting. 
I might need to take off those rose-tinted glasses, especially on a day like today.